Hi, welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt. And this is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. This is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce, Alfa Romeo's first SUV and it's been around for a few years, but this is our first experience with this spicy Veloce trim. While it's not the V6 Quadrifoglio, it still makes some pretty serious power, so let's see how Veloce the Veloce is. I know these modern Alphas aren't as true Italian as they once were, but even still there's something special about being behind the wheel of an Alfa Romeo. You get in, you put your foot on the brake, and you press the steering wheel start-stop button. I mean, that's totally Ferrari! And then, once you set off, you've got these paddle shifters that are a mile long. There's just a sense of over-the-top fun and kind of lightheartedness that you just don't get anywhere else. But in more quantitative terms, let's talk engine. It's a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder that's boosted up to 280 horsepower and 306 pound-feet of torque and all that power makes its way to all four wheels through a snappy eight-speed gearbox. But let's revisit that. Almost 300 horsepower and over 300 pound-feet of torque in a four-cylinder. I mean, this is serious power here. And this thing is only about 4,000 pounds, so with all that power and all-wheel traction, this thing jumps to 60 in just under six seconds. Not bad. If you need more pace, there's a Stelvio Quadrifoglio, which is possibly the most fun performance compact SUV, but you still get plenty of pep here in the Veloce, and it's relatively efficient with 25 mpg combined. Okay, back to the things that you won't see on a spec sheet. And to be honest, the things that you don't see on a spec sheet are arguably the best parts of the car, like the steering, for instance. It's a brilliant weight and actually gives you some feedback, which is unheard of these days. And then there's the damping and the chassis stability. It's not adaptive suspension, but it's probably the perfect damping for the application of this car, of the Stelvio. It's stiff enough to give you confidence in putting load through a corner, and it doesn't beat you up on these terrible <laughs> West Dallas streets. The steering is great, the damping has finesse, and there's a real mechanical LSD in the back. There's still some true sporting DNA in these Alfa Romeos, people. Earlier this week, we were in a BMW X3, which is a brilliant compact SUV. But four-cylinder versus four-cylinder? This Stelvio is more fun to rip around in, and it's more fun to rip around in than a four-cylinder Macan. So with that, let's step outside and talk some finer details. So behind the wheel, this Stelvio is shockingly fun to drive. And then you step outside and you have one of the most interesting and best looking compact SUVs on sale. For starters, you have the classic Alpha face with the triangle center grille and the split lower fascia grilles. Fun fact, the radar detector is offset on the passenger side of the grille. It's almost an identical look to the sister sedan, Julia. And all of this is draped in Vesuvio gray, which gives it a more muscular look. The headlights are large and the running lights are really dramatic. And then, as we look around the side, you have a Veloce badge on the front fender. And underneath that, you have upgraded 20-inch black wheels with red Alpha brake calipers peeking out underneath. And then we have some black accents everywhere, like the wing mirrors and the window treatments. The profile shape itself is sleek and makes the car look fast, even while standing still. The rear and the roof line is very tapered, similar to the Porsche Macan. And then, around back, it's a simple, clean, and elegant design with mirrored dramatic LED taillights. Of course, you've got a big Alpha badge, dual exhaust, and a body colored diffuser as well. It looks great, and on the road it stands out as something distinctive from everything else. So let's step inside. So, stepping inside here, you do have to temper your expectations a little bit. In terms of materials and build, it's not exactly BMW or Audi, but you still get some really nice leathers and stitching and detail work in here. The design itself adds to the personality though, and it starts with the steering wheel mounted start button. Just something you interact with every single time you use the car that makes it feel special. The cabin design is simple and tactile with physical buttons and switches for your climate controls. And you have a physical dial for the DNA drive selector. D being dynamica or sport, N being natural or comfort, and A being advanced efficiency <laughs> or eco mode. 
And don't take what I said earlier to suggest that it isn't nice or doesn't have Lux touches. You get heated seats in the front and back. The front seat headrests get Alpha logos embossed, and you get a heated steering wheel. You get a 9-inch infotainment screen with an iDrive-style wheel, and you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You do get an upgraded Harman Kardon speaker system here, and finally, you have some carbon-like trimming to add some spice to an otherwise black cabin. But there are three really nice design elements. First, your cup holders have a space cut out in the center for your phone. There's an Italian flag underneath the shifter, and I love the dramatically large paddle shifters. And the technology is pretty decent too. You get a decent autopilot system with lane keep and radar cruise, and you get traffic jam assist. And then we head to the rear seats, and they're decently sized, about the same as an X3 and bigger than a Porsche Macan. The rear seats are heated and you get climate vents too, which is nice. And of course they're black leather, so it's nice to have the panel roof to bring in light and make it feel bigger. And then there's the trunk, which is a decent size and again, bigger than a Porsche Macan's. There's also an interesting piece to the trunk where the privacy cover is split and half goes up with the tailgate when you open it. So the cabin isn't huge or made of gold, but you get some real functionality and some really nice features. So with that, let's get into the final thoughts. So the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Veloce. It's a really fun and really unique experience, and one of the nicest things about it is that I bet none of your friends have one. A great enthusiast once said, you're not a petrol head until you've owned an Alfa, and the Stelvio might be a nice place to start. So thanks to International Alfa Romeo for letting me have a go.